so my name, oh, first of all, good, if, uh, good afternoon, and thanks for inviting me to this uh, event. Here I will report to you about uh, some work that we are doing with our colleagues from the Institute for Physical Energetics in Riga. Uh, I am Marcelo Macera from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, where I am responsible for energy security. So we are providing scientific support to the policymakers in Europe for discussing this, how uh, security supply, affordability or competitiveness and sustainability can live together. Uh, of course, this is too much. Today I will discuss some of the applications of our tools to some of these issues in the Baltic region. And this is more or less the, the, the three points that I will touch. First, the evolution of the power system, because it's mainly about transition, transformation of the system. Second is, which are the main challenges that we see here? And then, which is the scientific support and how science can play a role in this? Uh, well, I, this is just for summarizing. Some of the figures were presented before. There you can see that the renewables already they play uh, some role, although fossil in some countries is still important. But mainly with respect to electricity systems, we have to understand the system as such that these it's not just production, the generation, but you need transmission and you need distribution. Without the conception of the system as a whole, you can be producing for nothing. So putting the right renewable resources without adequate grids is useless. This is about how and where to decide which investments or support uh, mechanisms uh, um, are more adequate or needed. And this is not just about technical systems. It's about an integration of markets. It's about integration of consumers, industry. It's about the right price for all players. So yes, renewables, but there are many questions that have to be answered and all together, because this is a whole transformation of our society. So apart from the national grids, more and more in the three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the interconnections with the other European uh, countries are getting importance. Why? Because you know that the full integration, technical and market integration of the three countries is still in its infancy. So we have some models where I think this should, was animated, but we are, we are able to study with these models the real functioning of the grids. They are the colors mean the uh, voltage uh, with respect to the units integrated into the grid. What is important to understand here is that, of course, a power system is a very dynamic system. It is there. It is not static. It's not something that you can play with because by itself it uh, evolves and has to have the right values. For instance, here we can see that in some situations uh, the voltage in the north of uh, Estonia can be too low. This is the meaning of the color blue. And that, that is a risk. At the same time, there are some lines with uh, some red or orange spots. That, that, that means that some lines are getting uh, to the limit of their capacity. All these are pointers to the type of investments that are needed. So yes, investment in renewables, but at the same time, yes, investments in the right grids for delivering the, this potential. 
So these two factors, the new sources for electricity production and the new connectors are the things that have to be considered together. And I've put here also the potential for the new nuclear power plant in Lithuania that of course can be an important factor to uh, factor in, in, in this equation. So, what policymakers, industry, but in the end, citizens will have to decide upon is this game of affordability, of competitiveness and security, the insular character of the power system in these three Baltic states, but also the role of an interface with respect to Russia, how to foster renewable, not just for internal use, we can say, but also as an integrated system with the rest of uh, the European system. This harmonization between renewables connected at, to the high voltage and renewables connected to the low voltage. And not the least, the further development of smart grid technologies. So grids are not just, just about cables and control systems. Now more and more, we talk about the E plus I paradigm. So in electricity and information, there's no electricity, no electrons, we can say, without the right information. This information is about prices, it's about sources, it's about uses, it's about the social value of the electron. And this new paradigm means also transformation of society. The key figure, as it was demonstrating before, when talking about development is investment. So it's money, we have to put money there somebody, public, private man. And is, there are many objectives. And so the key aspect is how to balance these different objectives. You can see here there is a long list. And making decisions about this means that you as a citizen, but also the policymakers, will have to make choices. Will be almost impossible to satisfy all of them at the same time. And this is a very long process. Making some sort of best guess of how much money we are talking about for Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, there you have some figures. These are big figures just for the grid, but are not impossible figures. In any case, this has to be studied in detail. So we have been, with these models, studying the systems of the future. Here you can see that with the new connectors and other things, the situation from the voltage point of view can, is bettering, but still there are some uh, orange points on the interconnectors. And there, when we study the power flows, uh, also there are some uh, red and orange areas where the capacity of the interconnectors will be reaching their limits. For instance, if you have a hot summer and you are, uh, you need to have the power, perhaps this will be the bottleneck that will uh, require uh, cutting power to some industry or to some citizens. So summarizing, there are five main challenges. Some of them are really about energy, technical. Some of them are about the market, but also other new issues. And energy, well, I think it, many of the points have been discussed, but the, I would say that what is important is to look into the future, to have these scenarios, as we have seen before, where would you like to be? And there's no one single scenario. There is no silver bullet said, ah, this is the future. No, you will have options. You will be discovering the potential of these options when you are going to go th towards them, but it's important to begin discussing these potential futures all through society, because you will be changing also the market. Who pays for what? How much? Which are the prices for the end consumers? So 
there, is, there are no renewals, there are no new grids without impact on the markets. And this will allow everybody to analyze the investments. Keeping in mind that you cannot violate minimum security supply. Denmark is saying, no, ah, you have to pay for this. There is going to have to be a, a minimum tax. Well, this is a key political and social decision. Who pays for this? And who is responsible for this? Because business by themselves will say, OK, this is good for my business. But business is not society. So this transformation of the grid will have to be also part of the strategy. And that means codes. And that means a deep financial analysis of all the assets you have there. But finally, I would insist on the transformation of this smartness of the grids, because this has a big potential. Smartness means that having information and communication technologies that will allow more exchange of data, not just between companies, but also with authorities, with consumers, with the citizens, where prices will be set almost in real time, where choices about sources of energy on these will be set also almost in real time. But most of these, and we have seen the transformation of society through internet and social media and social networks. Here we are putting capabilities as a platform where new social networks can be set up. And there are social networks where you have energy markets, prices, and choices. Well, we are trying su to support European policies on these with different tools. These are technical, technical economic, or market analysis tools. And that we are trying to collaborate with many uh, or other, of course, European universities and research organizations. Among them, with them, I would say mainly is an Baltic initiative with our support. We are in the process of setting up this Baltic energy security research platform that was announced here in Vilnius uh, this year, and now is in the process of being finalized. This is not a closed club. We are keen and, and very, let's say, uh, open to incorporate other actors. So uh, if you want information, please just contact me. Thanks for your attention.